Hello and welcome back to week three, day one of Open Division uh, EU. Uh, I am Spaceman and I'm joined. But uh, Athena, uh, I know we've cast them before, Mary. So, uh, do you want to tell us a little something about them? Yeah, well, actually, specifically, you and I, our very first back the Athena game, and it was really good. I was impressed with how they played. I was impressed with their teamwork, their synergy, their alt management. They really played phenomenally well as a team. So it doesn't surprise me to see that their record is a 4-0 coming into week three. I'm really keen to see uh, Tom Sky. He really performed on that Brigida. And uh, if we do swap onto a composition that's a little less goatsy, a little more DPS-y, he is known for that hands up. Some really exciting stuff coming around here. What I will say is that they center a lot around their main tank and they do so much to give him space. He's one of those Reinhardts that gets the Harmony Orb, gets the Zarya Bubble, in he goes, and he just swings like a mad person. So that's definitely the person you should be watching out for if you want to be seeing some crazy tank play. And it's also who Zephyr needs to be watching out for. When you're putting that much resource to your Reinhardt, when the enemy team is doing it, uh, it, it can create a lot of problems for you, especially when Reinhardt is your, your most important target in GOATS. So I'm excited to see if they're going to continue with this amazing streak that they've been on thus far. Well, we might see some GOATS tonight. We might not. Fibble, do you think we'll see some out, especially with hero changes? I know we saw a bit of GOATS earlier, but we saw this from both teams as well. Yeah, the, this last game gave us, I think, uh, a rare treat, a little bit of dive, a little bit of bunker comp, some some different looks. I I would like to think that we see more of the same here. Like I said, I think Open Division is, is the greatest breeding ground for new comps that we have in the competitive scene right now. Um, and I think if anybody's going to bring it, it's going to be these higher level teams that we've got here today. Um, who knows? I definitely think we're going to see at least one or two like crazy pocket picks, right? Like we want to surprise them on this map or we've practiced this strat here. You know, that's what I'm expecting to see. Goats will be there. Let's face it. It's really good. It's still probably the best comp we've got right now, but there's so much room now. People are learning to adapt. They're getting tired of goats. They want to try and break out of those bonds more and more. So I'm expecting something fun fun indeed and uh, you guys got any predictions before we go in i know both very very good teams and quite close to call but uh, uh, uh how about it some predictions before the match begins gg athena have been looking really good but zephyr is a team we don't know very well they could very well bring the fire today also on a full streak so mm, i'm gonna put it at a 3-1 and uh, I got to give it to my boys, Gigi. Uh, they've they've shown me some strength in the past. Hopefully, they're going to continue with that. Yeah, we've got Gigi. And what about you, Pebble? I think there's something to be said for past synergy and knowing what we're going to get with Gigi Athena. I think we definitely have that more with them than we do with Zephyr. But I think the sheer mechanical ability is going to be what gives Zephyr the edge here. They've only lost one map all season, which is really, really good if you're doing the math at home. So I'm going to go ahead and I, I'd agree a 3-1, but I think it's going to go Zephyr's way. Okay, we've got GG on one side with Nauri, Zephyr with Fibble. Uh, I'm, I'm going to stay on the fence here. I'm going to, you know, GG, uh, my, my favourites a little bit just because I've cast them before, but uh, I'm going to sit on the fence till half time and then I'll, I'll, I'll let you know what, uh, what I think about the match. But uh, you know who we do need to speak to now? 
we've got Big Hungry Full of Necra who are going to be casting this game for us. So, uh, guys, please take it away. Well, hello, hello, hello. Thank you for that introduction. I hope you're all ready for some uh, some tight and exciting games. How's it going over there, Necra? It's going great, Phil, across the pond. I'm really excited about the new year. This is the very first cast of 2019 for Overwatch, and it is such a good one. So I can't wait to get into the action that we're going to be seeing today. Yeah, definitely time to blow off the cobwebs. And speaking about cobwebs, we are going potentially to the uh, dusty environs that are the Nepal Sanctum. Um, why don't you tell us a little bit about what we, what we can expect to see in this sort of map? So Nepal is a really interesting map, and I love control maps because of the sheer amount of diversity that we get to see from team compositions. Each map offers a unique structure which affords teams to have to flex around that. So on Shrine, you'll see something different than Sanctum, that you'll see something different on Village. Um, so it's really exciting to see us go into Shrine right now because I do expect um, to see hopefully a little bit of different stuff here but as you start looking at the team compositions while we are in a pause it does look like zen rhine goats <laughs> which isn't exactly what i expected but no, it's but also you... kind of what i expected yeah you know you know the saying if it ain't broke don't fix it it's a it's a really powerful composition at the minute and it means that we're looking less at differences in strategy i guess and more about uh changes in in target focus and sort of micromanaging uh, abilities and positioning so uh still going to be an interesting match i think just slightly different set of things to look out for yeah for sure and we're gonna see just a little bit of a reset here uh, making sure that all of those open division settings are correct um, but we will instead of shrine be starting out on sanctum and uh, anyway. That is going to be a different thing that we'll be seeing here as well, because, you know, where you have that small point on Shrine that you're fighting for, you've got this massive open pit that you get to play with on Sanctum, and that just affords a whole different world of possibilities here. You're going to see both of these teams kind of just playing around a little bit with what they want to bring to the table, um, and hopefully we get to see some of this stuff stick. Yeah, it does look like people are actually about to commit to this. So yeah, two really interesting compositions coming out of the lineup there. Uh, we've obviously got a bunker comp coming out for uh, Team White Noise. GG Athena uh, looking like we might be seeing. And uh, here we go. We've done it. We've made the mistake. We've started talking about uh, what the comps are before people <laughs> have left spawn. It's a one way to guarantee that you end up making yourself look stupid. Um, so yeah, maybe maybe we do have that goats coming out for GG Athena with the uh, the Zen variant team white Hanoi's looking like they're trying to run a, a variant on the bunker comp. It's going to be really interesting to see who can make this work. Both teams out of the game, of course, are coming out Frost Arena on that Lucia. That's going to give them a huge advantage in positioning, taking this point nice and early compared to the very slow and stodgy composition coming out for Team White Noise. Uh, GG Athena looking to take this high ground approach, looking to use that speed advantage to get in. And here we go. They have managed to get in more or less behind them. G22 able to set up that bunker and they are rotating, rotating, rotating all the way around, making really good use of this deployable Arissa shield. So that actually very little damage coming in from this ghost composition so far. And they are keeping on with this rotation. G22 though with the Discord orb on them, very nearly out of position. And there we go, early kill. It's Gamerdoc unfortunately going down early. So much damage off the table. Feastdoc manages to equalize, taking out the main tank we've seen time and again once that main tank falls down that often sends the end for this team fight but having said that uh if gg athena look like they're in a good position here and out the go they have capped the point in pretty dominant fashion there necro what do you make of that i mean it was uh it was pretty fast and furious i like those rotations coming out from team white noise in particular yeah, Team White Noise did an incredible job, like you said, of utilizing that deployable Orisa shield, rotating it around, and making sure that they were staying out of the range of those Discord orbs. But you'll see that they've swapped over to a Reinhardt just to try to battle it out in a mirrored composition here at the door. Yeah, and here we go. We now have Reinhardt versus Reinhardt. It's going to be key watching to see where those Discord orbs go. Once you win the Reinhardt fight, that tends to be it. Megum in there gets a key D-Mech. They're going to try and push the advantage here, but of course, with that Zeri, with that Zenyatta ball, on oh no huge reinhardt gets booped off oh, frost arena says g22 down to the depths of course the 
ult advantage so heavy for GG Athena, having won one fight already, not able to actually get a huge amount out of that. Transcendence coming out at a key time, they're managing to keep a few people alive, but not before Swords take down Feast Dog. Surely they're just playing for ult here. You can't expect to win this team fight. We're going down and down and down. Two people left on point, and Lucio just managing to get out. But look at this four ultimates still online for GG Athena. Three for Team White Noise. Still a lot to play with. What do you think they can do here? I think they're going to end up utilizing the Reinhardt Earth Shatter. You get that ultimate so quickly that it is one of the best ones to start taking that pace of that fight and making that fight your own. So yeah. GG Athena will probably open up with something like that, maybe a Diva Bomb combo, but we're going to see what happens. Oh, the Shatter comes out, but it only gets one. And there we go. It's ult time, Diva Bomb, Lucio Sound Barrier. The Diva Bomb does take out Swords, and we've seen, I've said it already this game, if you can take out that Reinhardt, the rest of the team is more than likely going to crumble around. That was very close there. Cheek 22 nearly stepping off the edge. And here we go. Team White Noise able to push it back here. They're going to try and brawl up for control of the point for GG Athena. They're at 92%, so they are in one fight territory. And there we go. Swords, unfortunately, getting any is going to be staggered out at the end here especially with this chase coming in look there we go megumin high charge taking down swords to round out that fight it was an expensive fight though you saw that white noise ended up utilizing every ultimate that they had in their bank and now they are fighting to get those ultimates back they will have that transcendence online for its gamer dock and that's going to be huge as you see mutant on gg athena coming up on that zarya ultimate so that one's going to be pretty big here and gg athena coming in fast yeah, but here we go. Tom Sky does pop the rally, and here we go. Hammer down, but the transcendence in on top of it means very little is going to come out of that. Team White Noise, despite not having a huge amount on their side for ultimates, take that really decisively. So now at 35 98, two or three more team fights, and they may be able to hold on to this. So they do have two ultimates left in the bank, two left online for GG Athena. What do we think of that matchup? Who's got the Who's got the ults in the bank to really pull this out? I still think that White Noise is getting on that ultimate rotation that they really needed to. They didn't start out with very much in that first team fight once they had capped the point, but they have a lot to use here. I think that Diva Bomb's going to come out pretty soon. Yeah, there we go. There we've seen this lineup time and time again. Diva Bomb going slightly wide. Uh, does manage to does actually get a kill with the remake. You do like to see that mutant falling <laughs> to the Diva Mech as it comes back in. Oh, and Kling chased off the edge there. Managing to get away without giving any ult charge to the enemy. That's pretty important, but team kill for Team White Noise. We are now into last fight territory. Still two ults for both teams. Yeah, and I've got to give this ult advantage to GG Athena now. That Zarya Graviton is so powerful when it comes to this competition composition because it allows your Reinhardt to swing into it and get that Earth Shatter. And having those two big tank ultimates come online at the same time is really useful when you're trying to figure out this last fight, which we're about to get into. Yeah, in fact, uh, it seemed to last a huge amount of time, though, waiting for that spawn to come in. In fact, so long waiting for everyone to get in for GG Athena that they were unable oh to make gosh. it a progress onto the point, and Kling is going to feel so bad about that with the triple after the point is already capped. That's uh, That's got to feel bad. Yeah, that it does, but that was such a close fight from both of those teams, both of them getting that percentage into one fight territory, and at the end there, it just looked like White Noise was able to eke it out because of how aggressive they got towards that choke, just making sure that GG Athena was not able to touch. But you will see that as we go into Village now, that we are going to see a pretty similar composition coming out from GG Athena. They're going to stay on the Rhine Zen variant of goats, and Zephyr or White Noise, changing it up just a little bit, putting Megumin on the May. And I think yeah. that May might be pretty useful there with all the walls and this small chokehold and this small point that they're going to have to fight for. Yeah, between the speed of the Lucio and the slow of the May, they have a lot of control of this point. If they can get them, a huge wall from Megamin stops any progress. Frost Arena goes down nice and early. I'm surprised they're coming to this fight at all. Maybe just trying to get a couple of uh, ticks on ultimate charge there. But look at that excellent wall placement. Cheek 22 taking down swords. Thanks in no small part to Megamin, that expertly placed wall. And there we go. Team White Noise take that with no casualties. Oh, having said that, sorry. Um, no, no, no casualties at all. And quite a lot of ult charge, really. Halfway for a lot of the players there. 
Yeah, that's going to be really important as they move into this next one. But it's very obvious from the first team fight that they have practiced with that May on this point specifically. Those walls were so expertly placed, really did a great job of zoning off GG Athena from the point and putting them in a position where they wanted to fight them. Yeah, but look at this clever rotation coming in, basically avoiding the May wall because you saw Megamin crouch there, ready to go. And Megamin out of this fight. And Hammer Down comes out, and Team White Noise starting to really clear up. It's three on three. It's Gamer Doc doing a huge amount of work here on that Zen, staying in the background, just able to rain in damage and Discord Orbs and Harmony, keep his team alive, keep the enemy on the back foot constantly. Director has had to pop that transcendence just to try and keep his team alive. Not entirely sure what the thinking was there. Not a huge amount of his team there to actually take advantage of that. Team White Noise do have two ultimates online compared to nothing for GG Athena. GG Athena really looking to be on the back foot here. What, what can they possibly do to break this stranglehold that Team White Noise have? They need to start setting the pace of the fight with those ultimates, oh, but yeah. Zephyr's that using was them clever, way though. too that fast. Was Look at that. The Graviton onto the back of the Maywall, guaranteeing they were all stuck in place. Hasn't secured them a huge amount of kills, but a nice little tactical flourish there anywhere in the game. Graviton comes out, but that Maywall doing so much to keep GG Athena off the point. They are starting to find a few kills here. Dr. Dictor there with the Discord or proving absolutely key in getting the tanks down from, GG, from uh, Team White Noise. I really liked the ultimate that you were talking about with the May wall and putting the Graviton on the back of it, but I think that might have also been a little bit of a mistake. Because that May wall was in place, all of Zephyr wasn't able to actually hit into the Graviton. So you had this big ball of people that you were supposed to target down, but no way to really do that. And then you were able to see GG Athena come in and change the tide by using their ultimates. Yeah, here we go. This is more like what I thought was going to happen. The Blizzard comes out immediately counteracted by Dr. Dictor's Transcendence there, but Megamin secures a kill onto Sword. Sword's going down this early in the fight. Spells absolute trouble for GG Athena. But of course, we have got the Diva Bomb. Crafty Shield in the way. Not quite able to get that Shield Bash in onto Cheek 22. Tom Sky instead falling to the Reinhardt of Cheek 22. And at 86%, 87%, we are definitely in one fight territory with only one ultimate left online for GG Athena. Is that going to be enough for them? That single solitary Reinhardt Earth Shatter. They're going to have to get in front of Cheek's shield and that's very difficult for them to do when that Maywell's in the way. Yeah, that was so close there. Unfortunately, that Lucio just getting stunned out on the approach to that point, allowing Team White Noise to take Nepal 2-0. Yeah, so... That is such an incredible run for both of these teams, both of them doing quite a bit of progress under the point, but you got to give it to these tanks. These tanks are working so well together. I haven't seen effective Zarya Gravitons like this since they changed this grav, um, so it's really exciting to see this as one of the play of the games, but let's go ahead and throw it to our host and see what they have to say about all of this. No, no, I, th I think we're we're gonna we're gonna stick with it just a little while longer. We're gonna give the uh, the nice people some more of our wonderful just faces. Kidding. So, <laughs> just got to keep the audience on their toes. So, I think it's interesting if you look at the score for a lot of these games. You know that that that's a two nil, um, but it wasn't one sided. You know, GG Athena took that first point to ninety nine zero very nearly. So, they nearly got that a couple of times. What do you think they could have done to have maybe run things a little bit differently there? I think that GG Athena just needed to get their team together a little bit faster. I noticed that there were a couple of moments there where it looked like they were just staggering. They were feeding alt charge. They had already lost a couple of members and they were still investing ultimates into the fight. It would have been a lot better to see them take their time, call out that reset, listen to that call out and get back together so that they had more team fights in order to try to take back that point. But once you start investing ultimates, it's very difficult to want to back off because you've made that investment into that fight. Yeah, well, there's a saying in the UK that you shouldn't throw good money after bad. And uh, <laughs> throwing ultimates into a lost team fight is not a, not a particularly good use of resource, unfortunately. Um, one thing I did think was... Um, uh, let's not call it a misstep, certainly a little bit strange to see, was GG Athena on that final approach into Sanctum seemed to spend a good 30 seconds just stood waiting to go in. I, I do wonder what was going on in Team Comms there that made that decision just to hold and hold and hold uh, to the point where they weren't able to get onto the point. 
It's entirely possible that they were trying to figure out a game plan. They were just waiting until the very last second to try to touch. They might have thought that one of the members on their team were flanking around and were going to touch the point to try to get them to turn around. But it's very possible they just didn't have the coordination or the voice communication there in order to do that. But hopefully that's not going to happen this time. We will be moving into the next map, which is Dorado for this series. And yeah. hopefully they're going to be able to get that communication better. Yeah, hopefully. We often see this, that teams sometimes do need that first map to warm up. You know, you're, you're on camera, you're being broadcast. The whole world is, uh, is tuned in to watch everything that you're doing. Uh, you know, maybe takes a little while to just get over that pre-broadcast nerve. So certainly interesting to see whether or not they can take advantage of that warm-up period now. It's going to be interesting to see maybe something a little bit different coming out of our teams. So it looks like we have got our uh, our defensive setup coming out. Why don't you talk us through what we have for GG Athena here coming out on defense? All right, so GG Athena finally leaving spawn means that that's the go signal for us to be able to talk about what they're <laughs> actually running. And it looks like they're going to be using a variant of goats that uses Anna instead of the Lucio, which is very, very interesting. Um, I do like that choice here. I think that Anna has a lot of potential to do the most healing in the game. And she has these massive beefy targets from the Reinhardt, the Zarya, and the Diva to be able to get that ultimate that Nano Boost can do a lot when you pair that with one of those high value ultimates such as the Reinhardt Shatter or even sometimes the Brig in Rally. Who knows? Um, but here we go as they we see Zephyr leaving spawn. Yeah, so Zephyr leaving spawn with the Zenyatta variant on this triple tank, triple support lineup. So we've basically got shield versus shield, healer versus and unfortunately, I do think Zephyr may have a little bit of an advantage here because of that speed boost coming in from that Lucio. It's going to be so easy for them to get on top of GG Athena. GG Athena already rotating onto slope here. Quite a common defensive point. Uh, gives a lot of space for the defense and not a lot for the attack. But Dr. Dictor there takes out Cheek 22, going to force that reset immediately. Look how quickly Zephyr backed off there. They knew they'd lost their Reinhardt and that was a lost fight and they've escaped without giving away any kills. I like that they made that reset so quickly, and because of that, you're exactly right there. Look at the ultimate charge that is on GG Athena. They only have a couple of people that are even maybe a third of the way to an ultimate, so they don't have a whole lot here. They're going to have to just win an all-out brawl at this choke. Yeah, actually, look at that. Frost Arena's ult charge climbing drastically, 83% already. We're going to see that come out very soon, I think. We have had one Reinhardt shield go down. Cheek 22, the first to fall in this fight yet again, maybe needs a little bit of a rethink about how they're using that aggression. I think they might need to change something up a little bit, too. You see Frost Arena getting some major anti-grenades onto Zephyr's team. And that just means that they aren't able to do the healing that they need to with Fee's Dog on that Brigida, that AoE healing is lost. Same for the Lucio as well. So it does look like they are going to be taking a little bit of a different approach. That choke just isn't working for them. Let's try a bigger area. Yeah, it's certainly interesting. Rally committed to the fight. It's going to be so difficult for them to break through. But of course, the grab, Transcendence, Diva Bomb, big nade. Here it comes. Doesn't find anything with the Diva Bomb. Huge, unfortunate place. Mutant, though. Mutant with that huge amount of charge. Look at that. GG Athena. They may have committed two ults into that fight, but it certainly worked out for the Mutant. 30% of the way back to that ult nearly mere seconds after having cast it. And that payload slowly rolling backwards. Zephyr in a little bit of a dire straits here. Just a little bit, but you do want to see Megumin utilize that Zarya Graviton. Hopefully, Kling stays hungry, though, in order to keep this defense strong and that Graviton doesn't find its mark for this defense. Oh, but look at that. The Shatter, I believe, bashed out there. Mutant and Dr. Dictor starting to really turn that fight again. And Zephyr coming up empty once again. They actually, I don't know if you caught that, Cheek22 went to cast their Earth Shatter and immediately bashed out of it by Tom Sky. It's got to feel really, really bad. It does feel bad, especially because you were banking on an ultimate like that to be able to swing this fight into your favor. But now they have to figure out what they need to do here. Um, I really want to see that Graviton come out, but maybe they can get this D.Va that's out of position here. Yeah, Graviton committed into Zephyr, and there comes the D.Va bomb. 
Diva will not able to find anything beautiful shielding there. But the Graviton committed as well. It doesn't look like there's anybody really on hand to follow up. In fact, GG Athena just stuck to the point. Zephyr not able to really capitalize on it. Mutant takedown is opposite number. They are finally starting to get this payload moving just a little bit. It's Gamer Doc commits the transcendence to the fight, allowing his team a little bit of aggression getting on in there. But unfortunately, that uh, anti-nade on them is going to make it incredibly difficult. They managed to make it through without any losing a death. Frost Arena in the back, managing to take out Cheek 22. And I'm going to keep saying it. You lose that Reinhardt, you lose the team fight. It's Gamer Doc is fragging out before getting fragged himself. And that's it. Look at this. Blue, blue, blue on the left-hand side of that kill feed as Zephyr fall to gg athena we've got to be incredibly quick if they want to get in and recontest this this lucio needs to be the fastest lucio in the world if they want to get anywhere near to this fight it's going to be so hard for them to get in two seconds left on the clock and face Lock just managed to get in on that doomfist sadly not able to survive through that does trigger overtime but is it going to be enough we've got toast on this wrecking ball doing their damnedest to keep this alive but it's such a difficult position to get that wrecking ball spin stall going and 73 meters on the payload ticker for Zephyr GG Athena without a huge amount to do here to take Dorado that was an incredible defense coming out from GG Athena I don't think you know whatever problems they might have been having on the first map are definitely worked out now they had some incredible communication you could see that they clearly knew exactly what they were doing what the game plan was and what they needed to do in order to stop this payload right at that first fountain not even allowing Zephyr to cap that first point but now that it's flipped Zephyr's going to need to have a really good stronghold here on this first point of Dorado to have any sort of hope of winning this first map but I think that they can do it I think that the choice the changes that they've made to their team composition might work out for them just a little bit but we'll see what they end up deciding to stick to as they start to leave spawn yeah, so it does look like we are now actually out of the let's troll the casters with our picks <laughs> phase of the phase of the fight. And Zephyr have their defensive lineup, and it's something we've seen a lot from both teams so far this evening, opting for the Zenyatta variant on this triple support, triple tank lineup. Opting not to take the high ground here, going in for this all-in um, uh, bust or boom, I guess, positioning down here, looking to take a fight early. What do we think about this? It's a very greedy, aggressive positioning. It is greedy and aggressive, but I think that that's something that they have to do if they want to be able to have multiple chances in order to stop this cart. If they were to take that positioning on that high ground back there, they might not actually be able to get back if GG Athena is to, able to hit that team kill bell. So we're going to see that early aggression here. Yeah, in fact, here we go. Everybody all in on this team fight already. We see, look at this Discord orb straight onto Cheat 22. Um, Dr. Dictor knows that they have to get that Discord on and win that Reinhardt duel early if they want to win this fight. Of course, they can afford to just lose a couple of fights here and build some ult charge. Zephyr is still more or less holding the same position. Discord, uh, the Transcendence, come, Transcendence, the Zarya over there coming in to cleanse the Discord. It's Gamerdoc finds Tom Sky. That's going to send them back to spawn, waiting for them to take. Uh, respawn for everyone. GG Athena coming back in. So actually, Zephyr, this looks like it's working out for them. They've got the rally already. It's going to be even harder for GG Athena to take this on the next push with all that armor in play. Absolutely. And you're going to see that next push happen pretty early because of how close they are to spawn. Whoa, Graviton eaten. Delicious Gravitons coming out. But Tom Sky's rally here. So we are on pretty even footing. Lots of ultimates online for both teams. Graviton Diva Bomb, Transcendence, Sound Barrier all out at once. Cling there, taking out Cheek 22. Fees Dog going down fairly shortly afterwards. And I think that's pretty much going to be all she wrote. They are going to go for this aggressive push. Look to take out the last two poor straggling surviving members of Zephyr while they close the remaining 40 meters or so on this fight. Zephyr have got to be really quick if they want to get in and have another bite at this cherry. Yeah, and you're going to see that Zenyatta peeking just a little bit to see whether or not they're going to be able to touch, but that whole team is going to be back with that speed boost up, and there's ultimates. Yeah, so we've seen Transcendence, Sound Barrier, the Shatter coming in, but not able to get anything from it. There we go, the Deep Bomb Graviton combo, you love to see it. It's big, it's powerful, it takes out both healers, Ooh. Zephyr and the d -Make. This could actually be it, they could turn this around here. Just two left alive, Frederino and Swords doing their best just to keep this alive, not going in 
for the recon test. Backing out, they've got two minutes left on the clock. There's no reason to die on this hill any sooner than you have to. A wonderful comeback there from Zephyr. It was an incredible comeback, but an expensive one. Now all they have online is two actually very important support ultimates. You have the sound barrier, you will have the transcendence as well, and those are going to be very critical as you look at Mutant with that Graviton getting a position for it. Yeah, so we get transcendence on top of the Graviton Surge, of course, completely nullifying it, and the hammer down comes into the barrier. Cheek 22 responding with a hammer down of their own, and look at this, Zephyr finally woken up with a bit of fire in their belly, able to take out GG Athena once more. Just poor, lonely Kling left on the point, being staggered out here. Oh, that's mean, guys. <laughs> Any it's second mean, now. But it's very necessary if you are Zephyr. You want to get as much time off of that clock as possible. And that stagger actually made it so it's potentially only one more team fight here for GG Athena and Zephyr to get this first point of Dorado. Um, so you'll see that GG Athena is ready to go. They're looking to be able to utilize the Diva Bomb, maybe create some space so they get that enemy team to turn around. Um, but this is gonna be the last fight. Here we go, that Diva Bomb coming out. Sound Barrier comes down, just managing to save Mutant there. But unfortunately, Kling goes down to that Fire Strike. So we are in 5v6 territory, 30 seconds left on the clock. They need to be pretty big. Graviton there gets a lot of people in it. Diva Bomb and Transcendence all committed to that. Toast with the Diva Bomb taking out Sword Zephyr managing to fight them off once again 18 seconds left on the clock and i think this is going to be a miracle if they get anywhere close to getting a recontest on this just the sound barrier left for gg athena let's see what they can do with it out it comes hammer down finds cling it's not going to be enough though i'm afraid graviton already i didn't even see that get charged up oh. So Zephyr, Zephyr all crammed into that space. No one able to, to really follow up with any damage. Swords and Kling going down. Surely this is all over Bar the Crying at this point with a rally committed as well, doing their best. But Cheek22 takes down the ulting Brigitte of Tom Sky. And it does look like, again, short of a miracle, we are going to see this go for Zephyr. Graviton committed finally into the fight. Sword to the Valiant recontest there, but it's not going to be enough. Now, I don't know about you. I was willing to count Zephyr out on the back of that, given how strong GG Athena's defense was. But my God, what a defense from Zephyr in that fight. Yeah, I mean, we were we were giving props to GG Athena for how well they held that first point of Dorado, but it looks like Zephyr was just able to do it a little bit better. And it meant that they were able to take map two of Dorado and bring the series overall 2-0 in favor of Zephyr. Yeah, and I think, again, it's another one of these maps where if you look at the score, it's it's 1-0. It doesn't really cover just how close that fight was in a number of places, particularly when you look and see, um, I think it was, what, 73 meters for Zephyr against mm -hmm. maybe 50. I mean, that's that's really fractions of an inch on um, actually getting that point. And uh, it may be a little bit hard to say because it's such a fast, frantic fight. What was the turning point there? What was it that Zephyr were able to do that GG Athena weren't in catching that? I think it was just how they were able to utilize their ultimates. I think that before it was a little bit more about the communication when we were looking at that last map, but on Dorado, it really was about that rotation of ultimates that is classic to the GOAT's composition. So I think that that would be my take on it, but I am excited to hear what our analysts have to say about this map and the other maps, and I promise to throw it over right this time. <laughs> Thank you very much, Phil. Thank you, Necro, as well. Wow, what a, uh, what a matchup there on Dorado. Um, but before we get into talking about that, uh, let's go back a little bit to, to Nepal there, uh, Sanctum and, and, and Village. Um, now, Rui, what did both teams do well there? Because I think it was 99 to 99 on Sanctum. Yeah, it was really close on that first map. And uh, we saw a very interesting composition come through with the, it was the bunker comp uh, with a double sniper. And uh, we saw bunker comp in our first game today and it wasn't executed properly because they didn't have the diva. This time around, we saw it with the diva, but unfortunately it just wasn't strong enough to hold up to that goat's composition. The bunker comp was then swapped over onto a goat's of their own. But unfortunately at that point, it was just too late. The alt economy was heavily in the favor of, uh, of their, their opponents and they were just unable to actually get any value out of it then we moved on to village and oh my 
bird, right? So two things stood out for me like you cannot believe. The first thing is something that Thibble Dog pointed out, and he's absolutely right. May walls. Megumin on that May, or uh, Megumin, as chat has been calling him, has been doing so much work. His walls have been on point walling off the right people making sure the enemy team can't back out when they need to his blizzard was phenomenal yes the trance came through but regardless of the trance they still managed to burst down the reinhardt and take the advantage in that fight megamin's may is actually scary and not something that you want to trifle second yeah. thing that stood out to me was there was a huge bomb that came through from clean and we saw the Reinhardt there with his shield up, and Tom Sky missed the bash onto the Reinhardt, which could have completely turned the fight around. If you're missing that bash as Brigitte, it just, oh, it completely screwed up the push. Like little things like that. And that's why I always argue with people that say that, oh, Goats is just a press W forehead comp. It's really not. Something as simple as missing your bash onto a Reinhardt can completely ruin your push. Huge so epic gamer moments. <laughs> So we, we we saw something too, and it was I know I know it's two nil in Zephyr's favour, but it was uh, it was fairly close actually. Like you know we saw ninety nine versus ninety nine on Sanctum, and then we went to Village as well. Both teams playing uh, excellently well, and then we went to Dorado, and that first hold from GG Athena, wow! I mean, Thibble, why don't you you talk us through that? So this uh, GG Athena's hold made us think, oh wow, we're gonna tie this up. This is gonna be a really interesting series now. And not to say it's not, by the way, I'm not saying like this is over Resident Sleep or whatever, but like it was one of those moments where it's like, okay, GG's got this, right? There's no way they can't manage to get it basically to Fountain, right? Zephyr though said, okay, we know what we have to do. And they did it. Full selfless holds, lots of aggression, no free space, great ult management. Uh, Gamer Doc was starting to figure out how Transcendence works, was actually doing that right. That was really awesome. And without Frostorino on the Ana, which was an amazing pick that got a ton of value with those nades, they just didn't, uh, GG Athena didn't have the answer to really send it home. So while they did astoundingly well, and we talked a lot about, you know, them being very comfortable on Dorado and, you know, that's their map pick and everything. Obviously they know what they're doing here. Zephyr was just able to out mechanic them. Um, they managed to, you know, consistently hit good grabs, consistently hit good bombs. Grabs were being eaten, ults were being managed. You know, there was no quarter. Zephyr knew what they had to do. They had great discussions about their win condition, great discussions on when to engage, when to disengage. They knew that if they over aggressed, it was over. And even the one fight that they lost, they re-engaged so quickly and held off of some great individual plays that it didn't matter that GG Athena only needed 70 or so meters. We'll hold you to 50. It was really cool to see. Really impressive showing. Yeah, it was absolutely fantastic. You know, we've seen GG Athena hold there before in, in, in prior matchups as well. Uh, I loved seeing Dorado here as well. But we made some predictions before this game began. Uh, what, what you guys did, right? And uh, are you going to stick with those or are you, you going to change them up a bit? Yeah, I am I am 100% going to stick with my 3-1 victory, Kappa. Um, <laughs> because uh, that's not possible anymore. <laughs> um, but I don't feel like being a turncoat. So I'm going to be like, come GG Athena, bring in that reverse sweep. I know you can do it. I believe <laughs> in you. Uh, I, I, I think GG Athena has the, the chance to turn this around and win one map. Um, but it'll be maybe one map. I'm sticking with my 3-1 for Zephyr here. They're looking really good. If they if they keep this going, if they maintain this momentum into map three and take that and don't like laugh it up on map four, this could easily be a sweep too. But I, well, I mean, I well, would love to see a reverse sweep. That sounds fun, but we'll see. We will see indeed if we're going to have a reverse sweep here because we're going back to back horse. I'm going over to Phil and Necro. Please guys, take it away. Hey guys, thank you very much. Always, always good to hear you guys chatting up on the analyst desk. And we are, of course, moving over to Vorskaya Industries. So a um, bit of a different map type here again. Uh, the 2CP map, you may see it on your ladder game and shudder, but uh, it's certainly where we see some of the scrappier, more brawly, hard-fought Overwatch. Um, Necro, why don't you tell us a little bit about uh, what sort of compositions we can expect to see here? What's, what's a classic take on this map? 
uh, classic take is a pretty normal take, I think, for any Overwatch map in this meta, and that's going to be Zenrine Goats. <laughs> that's gonna be my well, prediction for what these teams are going to run, and I wish we would be seeing a little bit of something different, but it is one of the best compositions, one of the most run compositions for a reason, so if it ain't broke, don't fix it. Yeah, exactly. I mean, we, we, we gripe because we're casters and we see it a lot, <laughs> but, you know, it's uh, it's effective, you know. It's it's free SR in some instances, uh, but we do have now our defensive lineup coming out of the gate. Uh, I didn't for a second buy that tall pick. That was never going to happen. <laughs> uh, but we do have we have seen GG Athena run this already. The triple tank triple support lineup with the Anna. What is their win condition? What are they going to do to hold? They need to continue to utilize those anti-grenades that Frostarino was putting out so strongly on Dorado and utilize them here again on Volskaya. One of the reasons, I gotta say, why GG Athena was able to look like they had such a strong defense on Dorado at first was because those anti-grenades were landing and it was completely devaluing the rest of the support lineup that you had on Zephyr. Um, but Zephyr is going to come at them with a different variant of goats as well, and they're going to put Cheek on the wind Winston instead of the Reinhardt. So they're going to be looking to try to displace somebody with those strong dive mechanics coming out from Cheek and Toast and hopefully catch somebody that's out of position of that ball that Goats creates. Yeah, it's interesting here that GG Athena having opted for this static composition are now going to have to come down and contest and make themselves vulnerable to multiple angles of attack. And we are, of course, just going to get into the brawl phase, but Frost Arena going down so early is a huge problem for GG Athena. And we see that with all that healing out of the game, it is just going to be time to get rolled off the point. Cheek 22 taking down Tom Sky and then moving on to Swords. Wow, Reinhardt versus Winston is not a fun matchup, but boy, he made that look easy. Dr. Dictor taking a dive there, forcing the reset onto point B. One attack, all of point A capped. Wow, Zephyr seem unstoppable here. Zephyr does seem unstoppable. They're going to have to stop just for a little bit as they wait for Toast to come back out of spawn. But it's not going to stop them from getting up into the beginning part of point B and just scoping it out a little bit to see what they're going to be dealing against. They're trying to figure out right now their game plan as they move into this next point. They really only have the Winston Ultimate and the Brigida Rally that they'll be able to use for this next fight, but they're going to dive in pretty quickly here. Yeah, look at that. Straight into the drive any value out of that and of forcing off the point but there we go tom sky does manage to take down fees dog and fees dog going down is going to spell a bit of problem that area of effect healing reduced quite dramatically and yeah gg athena look like they're going to force zephyr off the point here look at that eric disappearing <laughs> off into the distance Oh, poor Toast, too. Toast is just going to sit there and wait to get bullied off of the point. Um, and then that's going to be just another bit of reset there for Zephyr as they've tried to figure out what to do. I do like this swap off of the Winston to the Reinhardt. I think that Reinhardt is going to help them out with the all-out brawl that is classic of that point B of Volskaya. But right now, now that GG Athena has gotten a good foothold and is able to get them off of this point in their very first defense, they have five ultimates that they're going to be able to use in their bank. They have everything except for the Reinhardt Earth Shatter, and I expect to see that Earth Shatter even come online as they continue this fight. Yeah, we're probably going to see that grab come out, use it to generate that Reinhardt ult. That's how we see those ultimates shade together. Swords going down, out it comes. Diva Bomb right on top of it. Transcendence, both teams popping Transcendence. Kind of hard to pick a winner out of that fight. Megumin with the high charge taking out Tom Sky. Does force out the Transcendence onto a sleeping Cheek 22, however. Uh, still, really, either way this fight could go. Diva Bomb does manage to get popped, doesn't find anybody. Cheek 22 and the tank line of Zephyr starting to really snowball those kills. Tom Sky doing their best, but it's not going to be enough. 66% of the point captured. They've got to be quick. This recontest, is it going to happen? No, Zephyr take that in a really impressive time. It is impressive. They have almost five whole minutes on the clock in order to take points one and two if we do get into a round three, but we will be switching sides now. It's going to be GG Athena up to bat to try to push these points of Volskaya. 
Yeah, I don't want to count Gigi Athena out just yet because we have seen they've had a couple of rounds in this where they have been pretty dominant, pretty strong on the defense, pretty strong mm -hmm. on the attack. So it could still go either way. Uh, both teams seem to really enjoy this uh, triple tank, triple support lineup. I did like seeing Zephyr opt for that slightly different take with the, uh, the dive tanks rather than the static uh, ground-based tank lineup that we usually see with it. So it's going to be interesting to see if they can leverage some of that uh, slightly different thinking in this defense coming yeah, I do like that they utilize the Winston, and one of the reasons why I think that Winston is so good on point A of Volskaya is because of all of the high ground that you're able to take advantage of. It was an incredibly aggressive attack coming out from Zephyr. You were able to use that Winston to initiate that fight, but now you have the defense where we're actually going to be seeing Cheek opt to utilize that Winston yet again, and I do like this choice here. I think that they can do a lot of work with it if they are able to take control of that high ground and coordinate their dives as they have been in the in the past round. Yeah, it's going to be interesting to see whether or not GG Athena throw the same thing at them again because um, you know, it's what we've seen from them all map. Uh, five seconds left to go and a few people still left to make their picks from GG Athena. So it's interesting to see whether Zephyr can make the most of these dives to take out key targets or whether they run the risk of getting stunned and slept into oblivion as they dive the backline. Uh, and we do actually have a slight variant here. Look at this mutant on this Ash pick. Oh, that's so exciting. I love that Ash is going to be able to play on that high ground as well and you can dynamite in, in like with the stuns as well. So there's just so much that you get to play with here, but you'll see that GG Athena is going to take a high ground approach here and Zephyr's trying to figure out what to do. It's a pretty interesting way to attack this point. Yeah, it is. We often see this rotation onto the high ground, but of course, um they have a huge range advantage here by having that ash and we see that mutant is already 60 percent of the way to that bob ultimate dr dictor going down and we've seen time and again it's one of the key picks you take down the anna you take down the reinhardt it's so much to stay in out the fight that really you don't have much chance of winning that for you g22 there gets a nice kill on tom sky on the way out and there we go gg athena forced back to spawn a little bit of ult charge for them here. Mutant very close to that Bob. I'm going to be very, very interested to see how Zephyr respond to Bob coming onto the field. I know how I respond to Bob coming onto the field, and that's with squeals of delight. <laughs> I do love when we get to see a Bob ultimate in one of the games that we cast, and I think we're going to be able to see that pretty soon. But on the side of Zephyr, they have a couple of ultimates that they'll be able to use as well. Fee's Dog coming up on the rally, being able to rally the troops together as they get into this next team fight here that they're coming fast to the point for. Yeah, and here we go. Ultimates online. Mutant pops. Bob. Bob gets out. Maybe not in the best of positions there, just to the right-hand side of that middle building. That's a nice big uh, anti-grenade there. Does find Cheek 22. Not really enough to do anything. Cheek 22 pops the ultimate and gets slept. Tom Sky waking him up with that rocket flail straight away. What a terrible way to be working up. Rally committed to the fight now. Tom Sky popping that. Just trying to keep his team alive through this Zephyr. Using this high ground advantage they've got. Look at that. The Graviton popped. Diva Bomb coming in on top of the sound barrier. It's not enough. Swords going down. Zephyr looking like they may finally be able to uh, actually fight this off. Mega Men and Feast Dog just looking to get the clean out onto GG Athena. It looked scrappy for a minute there, but GG Athena sent back to spawn once more. Yeah, and they still have a couple of ultimates though. We saw Mutant get use that ultimate <laughs> The last fight and is already back to another Bob. I happen? have no idea how that happened, but that's really incredible. And I think that means we're going to see a second Bob. So more squeals of delight here for the casters. <laughs> I'll, I'll mute myself when the squeals come out because they have been known to break speakers before. Bob committed to the fight. He comes in. I haven't even seen where he's gone. Where did that Bob land? Rally committed. Oh, same place, actually. Look at this. Bob just stood around, not really doing anything, not able to really contribute to that fight. Hammer down committed, but not able to find anything. No, does get Fees Dog, but Fees Dog too far back for anybody for GG Athena to actually contribute and get in on that fight. Cheat 22 with a big Primal Rage just fine. Frost Arena. Arix is opposite number going down almost instantly, though, and kills just starting to eke through for GG Athena. Got the rally committed. Only Cheat 22 left. I oh, know Cheek22 and Fee's Dog left. They've just got to get in, secure these final two kills, start getting a bit of capture progress. A long time spent waiting to get back onto that point. That's going to mean almost certainly that we have a people from Zephyr ready to get back in. 38 seconds left on the clock. Nothing like the time bank that Zephyr had on their attack here. So they're going to cap, but it's going to be an uphill fight for them coming into point B. 
It will be an uphill fight, but they do have a little bit of ability to snowball this point here. You did see Swords opt to switch to the Winston to just try to get back to that point a little bit faster. And another Bob! Mutant is just pulling these out. I have no idea where they're coming from, but it's every single fight that this Bob ultimate has come online, and there are so many better places for that Bob to be placed on point B. Yeah, so much more exposed. Graviton onto the Diva Bomb. That anti nade is not going to help you. You cannot heal through a Diva Bomb. That's a thousand points of damage straight into your face. And look at that. Zephyr with one ultimate tank that fight. Sorry, two ultimates to Graviton committed as well. That was a huge bomb from Toast there. Really impressive stuff. That was incredibly impressive. And that was not the first time that we've seen a massive bomb coming out from these Diva players on both of these teams. Um, so it's no surprise to me that that was able to pick up a triple kill there but now we're looking at gg athena trying to figure out how they're going to attack this point we saw zephyr swap off of the winston when they were moving on to point b and i wonder if gg athena is going to want to do the same but it is going to be a winston on winston battle here yeah here's here's my prediction i'm predicting nanobob sometime in the <laughs> next 20 seconds or so but cling going down early no it went down onto the boostio boostio on the field everybody Unfortunately, I suspect that was not the target they really wanted. Frost Arena not able to do anything with that as Zephyr chased GG Athena all the way back to spawn. Wow, look at this aggression coming out from Zephyr. I can understand why they're going to get aggressive here. Look at how high charged Megumin is. Megumin had utilized that graviton surge not too long ago and is already going to be 70 percent back to that graviton that's going to be one of those big ultimates that they need for this next fight they have to set the pace here if they want to keep up this defense yeah and here we go we're coming into another round of attacks we do have three ults online for gg athena but there's so much there to actually mitigate some of that damage the anti-nade coming in does manage to prevent that transcendence from keeping Feast Dog alive. Mutant, they're able to take Toast. The Sand Barry committed as well. They're just trying to keep this point alive, see if they can brawl out this final two minutes, 13 seconds, and prevent GG Athena from capping the point. But they do have a presence on point now. And a nanoed monkey straight on to Megumin. Cheek 22 falling down to Kling. It's still incredibly scrappy here. Um, GG Athena finally with a firm hold on this point. And look at this mutant. 74% of the ultimate again. And I don't think we're going to get time for a recontest here. No, look at this. Feast Dog just managing to get using that speed boost from the rally to get a little bit closer in. Bob committed to the fight, I think. Didn't see where Bob ended up, though, this time. Wrecking Ball coming out. Cheat 22 opting for that speedy run to try and keep the point alive as long as possible. Oh my god, guys. Ults, 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 ults for days. I'm not even able to keep up with this. Toast managing to finally find Swords. Maybe this is going to be enough for them to force GG Athena off the point. Losing that shield, losing that huge health ball. That's going to be a bit of a problem. Tom Sky taking out the opposite number in the form of Arix. It's Gamerdoc with another swap. They are just coming out here. Stall pick after stall pick. Getting onto the point as quickly as possible. They have managed to knock nearly a minute off of that hole from gg athena but still five minutes left in the bank for zephyr compared to one minute 15 for gg athena it's not looking great for them coming into this next round wow but i've seen it before i've seen teams with a smaller time bank pull it out here and maybe we will see Neori's prediction come to light with a reverse sweep coming out for GG Athena, but it does look like a little bit of dire straits for them. But I gotta hand it to Zephyr. That stall was enormous. Those the pick for the wrecking ball coming onto point, rolling around and rolling time off of that clock was really fundamental for uh, GG um, for Zephyr's defense. So I think that was really important there, and one of the biggest reasons why they were able to get that time bank down to one minute and 15 seconds so as we see those time banks come on for start of round three of volskaya uh we're gonna start to see zephyr come out of the gates here with the same composition that they run on the first attack and their first defense so if it, yeah. it worked out pretty well before so i can see why they keep it again yeah it does look like they've got a, a real affinity for this composition and they seem to be just so good at the synergy, particularly between Cheek 22 and Toast, able to get in and out 
of that dive so quickly. Um, GG Athena, they've really got two fights if they want to do this. They've got to get two fights and they've got to roll point B if they want to take this through to the next round. One minute, 12 seconds on the clock. Let's see what they can pull out of the bag for us. Mutant sticking with the Ash pick. They're opting this time for a right-hand side approach going all the way upstairs to try and engage on the high ground where they know that Zephyr are waiting. Split slightly here, looking to get a bit of presence on the point. They have forced... Um, Zephyr off the high ground here, so they are going to take huge advantage of Ash and Anna here, but unfortunately getting dived straight away by Cheek 22. But Cheek 22 having to back off just because of the sheer volume of damage that Mutant and Dr. Dicta are able to do, and it's not looking great for GG Athena. 30 seconds left on the clock. We just had the DMEC. Frosterita getting the kill onto Fee's Dog, and Zephyr are going to chase GG Athena off the point with 30 seconds left on the clock. They've got to pull something absolutely biblical out of their pocket to get on and actually do something with this point. No ultimates online for either team, uh, so it's going to be down just to who can brawl it out, who can pile in the most damage in the shortest amount of time. I mean, it's entirely possible that there are a couple of ults that come online for Zephyr. You do see Megumin 20% away to that Graviton, and that Graviton might be able to completely change this fight here, but let's see how aggressive they get on this push. It's unfortunate. Swords coming in immediately catches that Discord and then catches those hands from Toast. Mutant gets a key kill. In fact, Mutant getting two in really quick succession. Graviton coming out. If we can get five more percent on Mutant's ultimate, we're going to get Bob onto the field, but it's not going to be enough, especially with that even Bob is alive. Bob on the field, helping keep it alive. Boots off Swords with that swap onto the Wrecking Ball, just trying their absolute best to keep this alive as long as possible. So much resource there going into killing Mutant's Bob. And that's not going to be enough. No percent captured for GG Athena on that attack. Wow, that was another formidable defense coming out from Zephyr. But there was a pretty good attempt coming out from GG Athena as well. You know, you saw them just try to take a different approach, try to find another way in. And unfortunately, there just wasn't enough time on the clock for them to be able to do it. I think if they had had a little bit more time, they would have been able to get some capture progress there on point A. But now we're going to be swapping sides, going into round four of Volskaya and almost five minutes on the clock for Zephyr to make something happen here. Yeah, it is a big ask. They're going to have to do something pretty interesting here. They're going to have to stop Zephyr just from getting on top of them, which is what they've done every time. Everybody pile into the team fight, start getting some kills. They've got to make themselves so prickly in here. They've got to make themselves the ultimate hedgehog of defense here. And it looks like they may have some ideas for this. They're going for a bunker composition. Look at this. You've seen it in your ladder games. It's the Orisa Bastion composition. Of course, if you can get in on top of that Bastion, it's going to make him so uh, difficult to get any value out of but we see mutant do really well with that ash pick maybe they've also got an excellent bastion in their pocket i'm looking forward to seeing how this works out they've got look at all this distance look at how far zephyr have got to come to actually do anything to gg athena but again only one tick needed this could really be a difficult battle for them it really could be, but I think that this Bastion composition has a lot of promise. Uh, they're just going to have to deal with the rotations of it, but we have seen Zephyr deal with those rotations before. They're going to opt to trust, try to get all the way around that Bastion spam, but that Bastion pumps out so much damage from the hero rework. Yeah, and look at that. Frost Arena able to get a nice early DMEC onto Toast. Of course, still 4 minutes, 30 seconds left. They can afford to just back off and let Toast get that mech back. We may even see Toast take a dive, go all the way back to spawn. They really have the time to stop and uh, get a cup of tea and smell the roses on the way back to the point here there we go toast opting just to reset the charge on the ultimate they're dying so early in that fight why not yeah may as well get a little bit of a reset i actually like that <laughs> i see it's gamer doc hiding in the corner just trying to spam some damage as gg athena tries to rotate around the point yeah, but of course, with that speed boost from Arek, it's going to be so difficult to actually get set up in time. Here we go. Oh, Tom Sky takes out Dog, but no. Mutant going down almost straight away. Arek's with a apparently 500 damage boot there. Taking right, taking Bastion straight out the point. Swords, though, doing a huge amount of work on that Arisa, managing to get the DMEC and the follow up kill. They've got to secure this nice and quickly so they can get back into position. But actually, do you know what? GG Athena looking pretty good here. 
they are looking really good and I think that it's because they're utilizing that Arisa shield so well. You can see that they're communicating about where they need to rotate, where the enemy team is coming from, and they've just got their sights set so quickly on that enemy team. I think though that they will have enough time to get set back up on high ground, looking for a little bit of a different place to try to defend from, but that sleep's going to be pretty important there to just buy them some of that time to get mutants set up. Yeah, and I like this different rotation coming in here. Maybe not quite what the GG Athena were expecting, coming up from behind onto the stairs. But uh, we've got a Diva Bomb coming up online. Diva Bomb committed to the fight. And the Transcendence coming out means that nothing really, except for a quick kill onto Mutant. Though the kill of Mutant is going to be absolutely key here. So much damage gone out of the fight. Frost of Reno. Now, here we go. It's snowball time, everybody. It's Gamerdoc Megamin featuring really heavily in that kill feed, finally dislodging that Bastion Orisa composition. Deep Bomb coming out. Really, that's just celebratory fireworks at this point. It wasn't needed, it wasn't necessary. But there we go. Zephyr take that once again. Oh my goodness, Zephyr just, that was pretty convincing. Like before, you know, we had Nepal and we had Dorado and those were incredibly close maps. But Volskaya looked much more convincing for, you know, why Zephyr was the team to win here. So it was just a really phenomenal play though from both of these teams. Got to hand it to both of them for just doing a great job in this matchup. Yeah, and the one thing one thing I did like to see was um, GG Athena just trying something a little bit different. Mm -hmm. um, always nice to see. Let's not just smash our uh, smash our tanks together. Let's actually throw some DPS into the mix. So yeah, really, really good to see that. Yeah, but I'm excited to see what our desk has to say about those interesting hero picks from that Ash and that Bastion. I know they can't wait to talk about it. So let's hear it. Thank you, Neko. Thank you, Phil. That was. Uh... Okay, it, it was a 3-0 to Zephyr. We'll give them that. Congratulations. Uh, GG Athena, um, th thank you very much, obviously, for, for participating there. But we're sure, sure you're going to uh, learn from this and, and go forward. But uh, let's talk about Volskaya here, because we did see some interesting composition. We saw uh, some bunker comps with Bastion there as well at the end. Uh, Nauri, what, what did you think of that at the very end there? <laughs> I am never really a fan of this kind of... Uh... <sighs> It's, it's well known for being rather cheesy, right? To have, uh, you're on a, on a assault map, you, it's gotten to the point of like, is this going to be a four CP? And you know, the enemy team has a million years to push. So we're going to go Bastion, right? Um, I'm not a fan of that strategy because there are so many counters to it. And especially when you have so much time to build up ultimates and to figure out where the enemy team is and dive onto that Bastion and completely annihilate him, it wasn't going to work. Um, when your best compositions, specifically GOATs for this team, when that's not working and you, you want to swap it up to something like a bunker composition, I would say if you're going to be going for that kind of damage, maybe Junkrat... Um, also not ideal against goats it's a difficult one i feel like they've made the wrong compositional choices here and it's purely because their synergy something that i really raved about in our opening desk was just a little bit less so than zephyr zephyr was just that little bit further ahead they, they had a little bit more communication a little bit more understanding of what their team was doing and they understand the composition a little bit better so I'm not happy with the with the bunker composition. It could have worked, but it didn't. <laughs> Speaking of compositions and character choice here, I think, but what did you think about that Ash pick? And uh, did Bob do something? <laughs> no, no, he didn't. <laughs> and and while we talk about the bunker comp and Bastion and everything like that, we have to talk about the first round of attacks from both of these teams, right? Zephyr pushed and finished with five minutes left. That is lesson one right before we talk about anything getting weird on a standard goats matchup these guys rushed through the point it didn't matter even that the bastion strat was working in that they held for a couple fights because they had built so much time off of that initial attack right and the ash well novel and i love novelty don't get me wrong in this meta with shields being so prevalent and with diva just existing she's never going to get that much done and then on top of that the bob placements from mutant weren't exactly that great we saw a couple that were like zoning bobs right like you will not come down this hallway oh wait you didn't you weren't gonna in the first place 
okay, Bob's just, Bob, okay, I'm leaving. Like, that's, Bob is great, and Bob can do a lot. In this meta, he is minimized, which means you need to make sure that you're putting him in the right place, and that wasn't happening. So maybe practice your Bobs, go into the, the, the training range, make sure he's hitting all the robots, so when you come into a match like this, he's actually getting something done. Because he got, I, I think Bob's overall got one kill on Volskaya, and it was a cleanup kill. So, mm, novel, but not ultimately the best thing. Fibble, you're an absolute meme, and I love it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we're so talking again about characters. Let's talk about uh, some characters that are in the meta. We, we saw Tom Sky on that Brigitte absolutely carrying at times, getting like 3Ks and 4Ks. What do you think was the secret to, to his success there, Nari? It's communication, man. Um, something that I that I had noted previously uh, on the opening desk, it's something we've seen from him since the very first game that we casted of GG Athena. He is very good on that Brigitte. He bashes the right targets. He has a lot of control. He aims. I mean, believe it or not, Brigitte requires, you got to at least be looking in the right direction, right? You can't just swing willy-nilly and hope that you're going to hit something. He, his target prioritization is good. He's clearly listening to his team, waiting for the fallouts. Focus Ryan, focus Zarya, focus Anna. Um, he's he's there. He's with his team. He's with his tanks. That is so important to get those weird Brigitte's that play super passive in the back line. But he is there. He's with his tanks. He's maintaining that steady stream of healing. Unfortunately, it wasn't enough to bring his team to victory. But when you're playing with the correct skill, you, there's so much potential for you to improve, right? I feel like that's probably the theme for GG Athena from this game. It's not you guys are bad. It's you guys are good. There is space for you to really improve and soar. So I think that they need to be focusing on the things that they're not getting right. So, you know, Tom Sky and Brigida, hey, okay, no problem there. Maybe now we need to focus on Storms and make sure that when he's going in, we're giving him the he needs because in this game in particular... Something that I also spoke about on the opening desk, usually they do that. And in this game, they just weren't. He wasn't being given the support that he needed. So it's little tweaks like that that really need to be focused on. And it is it is the little tweaks. And uh, I know we saw some toasty diva bombs co coming Oy. up. And toast and, oh, well, well, you know, some of my favorite plays. But um, uh, Thibble, any particular player that stood out to you at all before we wrap this up? I'd say uh, least valuable player is that pun, first off. Oh, my God. Um, <laughs> Toast, Toast definitely stood out to me. He definitely had his moments. I'm going to give a shout out to Mega Man, though. I, I think, yeah. like, in the earliest stages of this game, when you really need to establish momentum and make sure that your team is going forward with a good mindset and a round up, um, I, I think coming on with that May pick and then maintaining that consistency on the Zarya pick throughout the rest of the matches was super, super key. He has great flexibility, great mechanics. He works well with his team. The walls were always coordinated. His grabs were always really good. Um, he definitely stuck out to me in a big way. Um, but there were a lot of players actually individually that impressed on both teams. It's just a matter of who was able to kind of stitch that together a little better. Indeed. And uh, congratulations to both teams here because they were both 4-0. and So actually... Losing one match here for GG Athena doesn't put them out of playoff contention whatsoever. They can win the remaining number of their matches and uh, still get in there. So congratulations. Well done to both teams. And uh, thank you very much to our casters there, Phil and Necra. Thank you to Nari Mizuki and also to Thibbledork. You've been excellent here on the desk with me. And thank you to uh, Broadcast GG for helping make this production happen and to Toadette, who's been doing all the hard work behind the scenes. And uh, most importantly, thank you very much to the viewers that are coming in here to watch because we couldn't do it without you. Uh, thank you and goodbye. <laughs>